Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Dr. Sin. Today we have with us Dr. Mona Thaki who has been specialized in neurology from Al Zora Hospital, Dubai. Let's welcome her to the program. Welcome, ma'am. First of all, we would like to know more about you. I'm Dr. Mona Thaki. Uh, I have been uh, educated in India. Uh, I've done my MD from a ja ja uh, Government Medical College, Nagpur, and I, then I did my DM and DMB from Bombay University, Bombay mm -hmm. Hospital. And uh, since then I've been here in Dubai. Uh, I've worked in the government hospital uh, for 10 years and in the private for uh, 5 years. I've also done my MRCP neurology from the UK. Okay. okay, so now coming on to the topic. So what are the common causes for headache? Okay, now headache is the most commonest symptom with any patient will come to a neurologist. And about 60% of our patients do complain of headaches. Now, headache uh, can occur because of anything around the head. So all these structures in the head are pain sensitive, but brain itself is not pain sensitive. So anything around the head, if that it is inflamed or there is a trauma, can cause pain. Now the most commonest co type of headache is migraine. Mm -hmm. And migraines usually come because there is a sudden dilatation or the vessels have suddenly become big and there's blood gushing into the brain and then you start getting headaches. Okay. Now migraine headaches are usually one-sided and a mm -hmm. patient typically presents with throbbing headaches. So he'll okay. say there's a pulse-like headache which is slowly building and it's peaking up and then it peaks up to a point that the patient wants to throw up, he's very nauseated, mm -hmm. he cannot tolerate the light and sound and he okay. wants to sleep in the dark. Mm -hmm. But this is a very typical type of a migraine headache, extremely mm -hmm. common. These usually runs in family, so you you will always have the patient complaining and says, "Oh yes, my mama also had it, or mm -hmm. my yeah, uh, okay. sister has it, or a brother has it." Now these headaches usually come uh, in the early uh, in the late childhood and adulthood, college days, and as the age progresses, then it comes down. Okay. okay. Now what triggers this migraines are when your body schedule is broken. So. If you have not eaten in time, you are hungry, you start getting a headache. Mm -hmm. Or if you have gone out in the sun, very sun bright light, yeah. all afternoon you have been shopping, you come back with a headache. You have travelled, a little petrol smell, very strong perfume yeah, smells, people. you will get a headache. Or if you have not slept in time, mm -hmm. or you have overslept. A lot of patients complain that, oh, you know, Even the you weekends... Even for long time, headache huh? Yes. So, oversleep also causes headaches. Okay. So, you have slept, slept late. Thursday evening okay. and Friday you have overslept, then you will wake up with a headache. Okay. So these are the very common uh, causes of or a precipitants of migraine. Okay. Now there are certain foods which can also precipitate migraines mm -hmm. in certain people. So okay. common causes like chocolates, cheese or very sour food or certain types of pulses, mm -hmm. Chinese food or fast foods, uh, these which contain MSG, they can precipitate a migraine. Okay. So, uh, all the patients should be aware and sh they should focus on what causes the migraine and try and avoid these things. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Now, uh, what can we do about this migraines? The migraines are, are, are because of genetics, okay? it's, it's because your gene, you are predisposed to mm -hmm. change. Okay? Some people do get it when uh, the periods are due because there are hormone changes okay. happening. Mm -hmm. okay? yeah. So when the migraines are infrequent, what we do is we give a when necessary medications only. Mm -hmm. Now this is the only uh, symptom where you have to take a painkiller early. Now, you know what happens, we say, oh there's pain, you should not take more painkillers. So you know, mm -hmm. you know, suffer it and tolerate it, but this is not the case with migraine. Okay. Migraines, you have to take it early. Okay? Mm -hmm. You can take start with paracetamol, panadol, two panadols would be good enough. Okay. But in certain cases, the headache does not go with the Panadol and you have to take a stronger pill. Mm -hmm. There are certain types of medications which are very specific for migraines. Okay. Okay. So we can take that uh, for mm -hmm. that, uh, for migraines. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what we advise is always carry that pill in your pocket because mm -hmm. in case a headache is starting, you have to take it. Take that. Okay. Now a lot of patients, what they do, they get used to taking a lot of painkillers. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, yeah that, most of them do. Yes. And then what happens, they get a painkiller induced headaches, which is a daily headache. Now, migraines are never daily headaches, but mm -hmm. when it, they, it has converted into a chronic migraine or a daily headache, then it is different. Mm -hmm. okay? Then you have to stop the painkillers. Okay? Okay. Now, there are certain medications which we can give to stop your attacks of migraine. Mm -hmm. 
it's a course of medications for two to three months, mm -hmm. and uh, which can reduce your frequency and severity of migraines. Okay. okay. But migraines are not curable. Oh, it is not. Yes. So we should know how to prevent that more mm -hmm. than treat the whole thing. Okay. And what are the common types of headache? So now the commonest is migraine. The other primary types of headaches mm -hmm. are the second common is tension type headaches. A lot of people get a lot of stress and <clears throat> they're thinking too much, not sleeping in time, very anxious or depressed. These people get headaches like a tension type headache. Now tension type headaches usually present with a ring like headache. They have got mm -hmm. a pressing pain here <coughs> and this all gets tightened up. This is called okay. a tension type headaches. This is second to the migraine type of headaches. Mm -hmm. Other types of headaches are cluster headaches. Sometimes it will come right into the eye, the eye becomes red, starts to water and these are very very severe types of headaches. The other types of headaches are exertional headaches. Some people after a lot of gymming, weight lifting, they will oh, get a okay. headaches. Okay. Uh, these are primary types of headaches. Now the dangerous ones are the secondary types of headaches, mm -hmm. which all of us are wary of. So is it a tumor sitting inside the brain? Is it some inflammation? Is it uh, some cyst inside the brain? So these are the secondary types of headaches. Mm -hmm. What are the danger side of the headaches? So the danger signs are when your headache Suppose you have migraines, okay, and you think, oh, this is migraine, why should I go to the doctor? I'll just take a Panadol. But see, migraines, when it changes character, you were always having a throbbing headache, but now you're having a very severe splitting headache. Mm -hmm. This is a time, this is a danger sign, so you have to rush to the hospital. Certain headaches which are not responding to your usual medications, okay, they have become resistant, you have to see the doctor. Other types of danger signs are when you get a headache with fever. Headache with fever is an ominous sign. So that means the, your, the fever, the infection has gone inside the brain. It could be a sign of meningitis. Okay? Mm -hmm. The meningitis will, will present with severe headache, vomiting, neck stiffness. The patient will not be able to put his head down. These three signs are signs of meningitis. You cannot waste a single moment. You have to rush to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other types of headaches are when it is a very severe type of headache which has never occurred in your life. It is the first time headaches. Mm -hmm. It could be a sign of bleeding. Yeah. So it could be a, a one of your vessels has leaked. okay, Or the, uh, you have an abnormal bunch of vessels which has leaked. Mm -hmm. okay, Or a tumor which has bled inside. So these are very dangerous signs of headaches. And okay. you, if you get these signs of headaches, you have to rush to the hospital. How can we avoid the headache? Yes. Avoidance of headache is treatment of the cause. Now, if you have migraines, you have to treat the migraines mm -hmm. as per the medication sub, sub, uh, supplied. If you have a tension type headache, you have to treat the stress which is causing their headaches. Mm -hmm. If it is a secondary type of headaches, you have to treat the secondary cause of headaches. Okay, so it is always treatment of the cause. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can get <coughs> sinusitis presenting like headaches. You can get an ear infection presenting like headaches. Mm -hmm. You can get a teeth infection presenting like headaches. Mm -hmm. Okay, Certain types of headaches or pain in the face can come with a sharp pain on the face. It's called a trigeminal neuralgia. Okay. So it is the fifth cranial nerve which supplies the face, the sensations on the face. Mm -hmm. If for some reason it is getting pressed or it is getting irritated, then you will get very sharp stabbing pains on the face. Okay. Uh -huh. This is called trigeminal neuralgia. A lot of people do confuse it with a teeth pain. And uh, I've seen a lot of patients coming with tooth extraction done, but the pain is not gone because mm -hmm. the pain is something different. Okay. So if this you do get these kinds of pains, you should always see a neurologist. Okay. So now coming on to stroke, what is stroke actually? Now stroke means lightning from the sky, sudden, something very sudden, that's a stroke. It is something out of the blue which has come from the sky. Mm -hmm. Strokes come like this, they will come very suddenly. Okay. So what are the causes for that? Yes, so what happens in stroke is the blood supply to the brain is suddenly stopped. Oh, okay. okay. Uh -huh. So it, it, the, the blood supply when it can be stopped, when there's a small clot inside the, in the blood vessel or the blood vessel has leaked. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So these are the two types of strokes. So it is, it is a clot which we call an ischemic stroke that is blood supply is less to the part of the brain or there is a leak in the, uh, in the blood in the brain which has caused blood to go less into that part of the brain. So these are the two types, it is a hemorrhagic stroke mm -hmm. okay? and ischemic strokes. Ischemic strokes account for about 85 percent, hemorrhagic strokes are about only 15 percent so they are less. Mm -hmm. Ischemic strokes present with a sudden onset of one-sided weakness, sudden onset of a blindness, suddenly you are not able to talk, suddenly you are not able to understand, suddenly you are, you are, you are losing balance or you, you are seeing double, mm -hmm. and you have suddenly fallen unconscious. So this could be a sign of stroke. Okay? Hemorrhagic strokes are very catastrophic. They can present with a very severe type of headache and you suddenly lose consciousness. Okay or you can get a seizure okay so this could be or one sided weakness okay so mm -hmm. these are the ways a stroke can present okay so what kind of treatment you give for stroke patients now suppose you a patient does suffer from a stroke okay first we try and tell them that if you get this kind of one-sided weakness, you should rush to the hospital. It's an emergency. Mm -hmm. Now what happens? This weakness is usually painless. So what happens? The patient will say, oh, you know, this is just weak. It'll go away. Mm -hmm. They'll start, you know, uh, shaking their hands. Oh, this is numb. No problem. We'll wait till tomorrow. Yeah. But what happens when you lose a, the golden hour? Okay. The blood has stopped to the one side of the brain. That's why you've got a one-sided weakness. Mm -hmm. So the clot which has gone into the brain, it has to be dissolved or removed as soon as possible. The sooner you do, the less brain is damaged and mm -hmm. you, the more brain you save. So now the dictum is time is brain. So as soon as you get, you have to rush to a hospital where there is a neurologist available. There are facilities for MRI, CT scans and mm -hmm. thrombolysis. Okay. okay. So as soon as such a patient does come, we try and evaluate and see whether he has the criteria to be thrombolyzed. Mm -hmm. Now what is thrombolysis? It is an injection which we give to dissolve the clot. Okay. Okay. The sooner you give this injection, the better because the more brain is saved. Mm -hmm. okay. Because once after 3-4 hours have gone, we cannot do mu anything much. Okay. Okay. Because the damage will be more or less permanent. It mm -hmm. will only be physiotherapy and preventive medications. Okay. Okay. So by your program, I would like to tell all the people that as soon as you do find signs of stroke, please always see the hospital which is nearest to you. So you don't waste time, time. in calling people, calling your GP, what should I do, where should I go. You have to see these things in, uh, in advance. Okay. okay. So how can we diagnose it at the earliest stage? Yes. So the diagnosis is usually clinical. So as soon as you see this, these signs of one-sided weakness, double vision, vision loss, slurring of speech, un not understanding. What we do as soon as the patient comes, the emergency doctor will evaluate and do a CT scan. Mm -hmm. Now the CT scan in the first 24 hours can be normal. Okay, but why we do that? So we rule out a bleeding inside the brain. Okay, okay. if there's no bleeding, we can go ahead with the thrombolysis, mm -hmm. the injection which I okay. spoke to you about. Okay, when we do a CT scan, we can also do an MRI scan which, can, which is always better but, and it can show early changes also. Mm -hmm. We can find out which artery is blocked. Mm -hmm. Suppose a big artery is blocked of the neck or of, from the, of the main branches. Then if you have the facilities within 6 hours, we can put a catheter inside the brain and remove that clot. Okay? Okay. This is called intra-arterial removal of the uh, clot. Mm -hmm. okay? Now this is a proved therapy and it is more effective than only the injection. So okay. if you are one of the major arteries are blocked, we can give do, do this. Mm -hmm. okay. Now the second step which comes is once you have had the stroke, we try to find out the causes of stroke. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now what are the common causes of stroke? <coughs> See there are modifiable factors and non-modifiable factors. Non-modifiable factors are which are not in our hands, okay? like age. So as you age, your risk of stroke goes on increasing. Mm -hmm. Why does it go on increasing? Because atherosclerosis, the coating of the arteries goes on increasing as we age. Mm -hmm. So this is an aging process. Okay. So the older the patients, the higher the risk of stroke. Okay. okay? So these are not in our hands. Certain um, 
ethnic groups are more prone for strokes sir if you have a family history of strokes then you are more prone for strokes mm -hmm. so these things are not in your hands okay. okay but what is in your hand modifiable factors now what are the modifiable factors commonest cause is hypertension okay so you have to treat your hypertension very aggressively and early mm -hmm. hypertension is painless okay so unless you go and check mm -hmm. you will not know yeah okay so once in a while all of us should go for a check. blood pressure check and uh, uh, for above 40 they have to go for these checks mm -hmm. okay sugar diabetes is another cause of stroke okay then you have if you have a heart problem okay you are you got a heart attack then you can get small clots in the heart which can go inside the brain okay, okay. <clears throat> if the heart is not beating very well sometimes it fibrillates it moves very irregularly mm -hmm. okay it's called atrial fibrillation mm -hmm. these can uh, cause a lot of clot formation inside the heart and this can go inside the okay. brain okay so uh -huh. this is another very common cause of stroke okay. then the arteries the main arteries in the neck if there is a lot of coating or there's a plaque sitting there a clot sitting there that can go inside the brain mm -hmm. okay so these are very common causes common of cause. stroke okay then there are lifestyle things of your obese if you are smoking if you are drinking more than usual these are very common causes and increases your risk of strokes mm -hmm. so now lastly what is the advice that you would like to give to the audience see regarding stroke i would like to tell that you have to recognize your stroke very early if you have had a stroke you have to see what has caused it and you have to treat those causes mm -hmm. lifestyle modification extremely important that you uh, change your lifestyles you eat healthy you exercise you don't smoke and drink and uh, stay stress free and at this point i would like to say that uh, we have to pay attention to our mental health also so the less stressed you mm -hmm. are the more less chances you have of getting heart attacks and brain attacks okay and that was nice talking to you thanks a lot for being a part of our program so that was dr monatha khi with us until we meet next time this is me naina signing off take care